Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to today's presentation on COVID-19 natural solutions. And this is part two of four on, uh, on nutrition and supplements. Of course, this webinar series is in collaboration with the National Incubation Center, Islamabad, Pakistan. And here are our contact details for both our college based in Leicester, UK, as well as the National Incubation Center. So I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Parvez Abbasi Sahab, uh, who's a director at the National Incubation Center to say a few words as introduction, welcoming everyone here and to kick off today's session. So uh, Parvez Abbasi Sahab, please feel free to unmute yourself and we can get the session started. Thank you very much Hussein and welcome to all of the audience today, wherever in the world you are. Um, this, as you are aware, is the second session of the Natural Solutions in collaboration with the Medical Co College of Medicine and Healing Arts uh, and the National Incubation Center. Last, I'm very happy to say that last week we had a tremendous response, and I hope that some of the people benefited from the fact that uh, there was an opportunity to learn how to protect ourselves and how to build especially our immune system to protect ourselves against COVID. COVID, as we all are aware, in 2020 uh, has changed the world for us. Uh, many of us have lost loved ones, lost incomes, lost jobs, and even lost our health as well. In 2021, um, obviously, there's a vaccine coming out, and we're also trying to find ways, alternative ways that we can live with this and even protect ourselves. I think there's a lot more learning than we had this time last year. And through that experience, social distancing, hand sanitization, and also the ability to uh, take other preventive measures hopefully is going to help us. Today's session, we're talking today about nutrition and supplements. And I hope that this will take us further along the journey from where we were last week. Um, I would like to just uh, make a quick introduction to our speaker today, uh, Hakim Salim. Hakim Salim is a principal at the College of Medicine and Healing Arts in Leicester, UK. Uh, he's also a director at uh, Mosin Health Clinic. Hakim Salim has been practicing um, TIB since 1978 in the UK. And his institution, the College of Medicine and Healing Arts, is registered in England and Wales, providing professional training worldwide in traditional medicine practices, incorporating modern knowledge and skills. This is one of the things that we do is we take the best of international experiences and bring them back together. At the National Incubation Center, we work with hundreds of startups, and many of them have been impacted in and around COVID year. Many of them have found solutions using technology, using traditional medicine, but incorporating the latest technologies. So hopefully today's session will allow us to learn more, to be able to protect ourselves. And without further ado, I would like to introduce Hakim Salim and thank all of the participants and the organizers for today's events. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Parvez Abbasi Saab, uh, your colleagues at the uh, National Incubation Center. Uh, what I'd like to suggest that we really just have a very quick, uh, a brief review of what we did last week so that those people who kind of joined us uh, for first time, they get an idea, and then we'll go into looking at how we can uh, minimize our risks uh, of getting uh, COVID-19 and uh, in unfortunate situation, if any one of us or our families uh, get it, how can we use uh, uh, intelligent nutrition and supplements to minimize the risks uh, of uh, serious uh, stages. As we did last time, inshallah, I'll be using Urdu to 
communicate with uh, those uh, who are joining us and uh, they need uh, facilitation in Urdu. So, the Awadin Wadrat, who are in the first place, I will be able to get a summary of the people who are in the first place. I will be able to get a summary of the people who are in the first place. I will be able to get a summary of the people who uh, so really, this is the idea that uh, this webinar is in uh, four stages. We had uh, focus on natural remedies and how they can both help to prevent this condition and also help us deal with it. This week, the focus will be on nutrition and supplements and inshallah, uh, next week, lifestyle and personal care, and then finally, spiritual healing and well-being with respect to its application for uh, this condition. As we said, really, the origin of this um, condition was uh, in uh, December, 31st of December, 2019 in uh, Wuhan, China. And it was reported as a cluster of cases of pneumonia by the Chinese uh, health officials. And then really on 11th of March 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic and deemed it as the most significant public health emergency since the Spanish flu of 1918. So really it's a, a very big challenge and a, a crisis for uh, human health and well-being on a global level. Now, we actually took these deaths as of 27th of January. So let's quickly have a look at, unfortunately, how many human beings have uh, reported dying from uh, this condition. You'll see that America is still at the top in terms of uh, unfortunate deaths, uh, followed by Brazil, and then India, and then Mexico, UK, uh, UK deaths have, uh, you know, I have more than 100,000. Italy, France, Russia, Iran, Spain. I wanted these slides of Pakistan here because obviously one, we are uh, working with our friends and colleagues there, but also Fortunately, Pakistan has a very uh, small uh, death rate from this uh, pandemic. And again, I included China here because really the problem started here. So some of the questions we need to ask really, how is it that uh, the Chinese uh, people have been able to deal with this uh, pandemic so successfully? So we will speak about some of that as we did last time. Uh, we'll share some more this time as well. So very unfortunate situation. Here is again briefly the clinical symptoms of uh, COVID-19. You'll see on the left are the main uh, condition, uh, symptoms and then on the right, the minor ones. Again, in terms of the research so far, age seems to be the greatest risk factor followed by these uh, other conditions. So, ye jo, ye jo hai, to isme, ye shuru hui thi Chin ke shair wuhan se, magar uh, wuhan se, wuhan ki jo ambaat hai, bhoat kam hai, achhi baat hai, magar dunia mein, aur khas kar America, England, wohara ke aapne numbers dekhe, ye bhoat siyada hai. To kuch sawaarat hai sen ke bhai, jahaan se ye bimari ki, so is kili age subsidiada any risk factor or uskebad mutapa or fil zabitas or kalb cameras or sans cameras. 
Again, it's interesting. Uh, we hardly find this information in so-called mainstream media um, or in the public health arena. The efficacy of the treatment of COVID-19 with herbal, traditional Chinese herbal medicine was reportedly 90%. Now that's phenomenal really. And the Chinese nation in its 5,000 history has experienced 300 epidemics to date. So they have a lot of experience of dealing with uh, these kind of conditions. And again, Chinese medicine, as I said, has been practiced over 5,000 years. So I'm sure we have some learning to do in that sense. It was noted by one of the senior uh, advisor to the World Health Organization that really uh, Chinese method uh, was the only successful method so far. And it's interesting that none of the medical staff working in the traditional Chinese hospital or using traditional Chinese methods um, got infected or died. And this is uh, the use of TCM. Again, I just thought we shared that really uh, herbal medicine and natural ways of uh, uh, dealing with all sorts of diseases, including uh, pandemics, goes back in all human cultures over thousands and thousands of years. Here is a slide that gives you some idea of how far back humanity has been really developing these wholesome traditions. And we're going to share for yourself from traditional Chinese medicine, the learning, Ayurveda, Hippocratic or Yunani medicine, uh, prophetic medicine, Thibbun Nabi Sallallahu and uh, finally, as uh, we live in contemporary world, anything that's useful, we incorporate it in particular what is called complementary and alternative medicine. And today, some of the solutions in terms of uh, diet, food, and supplementation will be from one or more of these uh, traditions. Again, we are really people who are inclusive of other traditions. So, you know, we're not shy to use knowledge and expertise from other traditions, which uh, makes sense and is uh, human centered. Again, the whole idea really behind these webinars is to give yourself and your families and your colleagues safe, effective, affordable, and easily available. Uh, ideas and remedies and foods and supplements which can you, you can use and your networks can use to protect yourself and to minimize the risk of getting COVID. And if unfortunately you do, how can you deal with those without becoming life-threatening? Again, all these traditions in their own way have a central idea that there is an internal intelligence in a human body uh, Tabi, as we call it in uh, Thib, uh, and really this is given at the time of birth to each human being, which really self-preserves and regulates and uh, deals with uh, defending ourselves. And this is common to all naturopathic traditions of uh, humanity. And really, this is the area which we empowering you to understand and to to develop and to strengthen. Uh, so this will minimize the um, infection. Again, let's just look at it. Uh, what are the founder of Hippocratic medicine? Uh, Hippocrates really said almost 400 plus years ago that there can be nothing more important and necessary to know than the science of nutrition. So let your medicine be your food and your food be your medicine. So Bukrat ne aaj se takriban kuch 400 saal kabal masih jo hai kaha ki riza ki ahmiyat kya hai aur kis tarah riza hi agar dawa ho to better hai. Again, uh, one of the scholar and uh, second most important person in Ayurvedic tradition, interesting said that a good and proper diet in diseases worth 100 medicines and no amount of medication can do good to a patient who does not observe a strict regimen of diet, uh, charak really. 
And again, the Prophet ﷺ said that the stomach is the pool of the body and the vessels uh, feed it. And when the stomach is healthy, the vessels convey health from it. When the stomach is ill, the vessels can convey illness. Again, Ibn Sina uh, mentions that most illnesses, even those which lead the sufferer to the specialist, arise solely from long continued errors of uh, diet and regimen. And again, a very recent uh, scholar researcher by the name of Dr. Price, those who are familiar with naturopathic European traditions, they will be familiar really that uh, they went around uh, him and his colleagues and his wife. And they found really that as people move away from tr their traditional diets and take on what they call Western diet, civilized diet, the amount and the depth of illnesses increases and really this knowledge has been known since the 1920s and 30s. So for those of you who are interested, you can look at uh, Dr. Price Foundation, it's still uh, alive and uh, helps people. And he called it obviously the deadly diet. Again, modern uh, nutrition looks at diet in these six broad categories. Now, before we look at uh, supplements and diet, really, the first thing is that the importance of digestive uh, health, particularly for immunity. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to understand. First of all, that poor digestion and malabsorption is a very common problem. So, Nizame Hazm Joyoska say, Nahona Bimariyo Ka Baise. Or the second thing is dysbiosis. Really, there is a major imbalance of the intestinal bacteria. Uh, so let's look at that. Now, here are some of the symptoms of poor digestion and malabsorption. Uh, yeah. This is interesting because really it's not very long ago that modern research found out that 70 to 80% of our immunity is actually in, is located in the gut. Now it's fascinating that, you know, I just shared with you those earlier slides from the Prophet and from Hippocrates and uh, Jarak and Ibn Sina. So it's fascinating how those, uh, in the case of the Prophet how really they were a perfect physician that Allah endowed them with that knowledge and uh, understanding, but also from the traditional uh, Yunani medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, you can see that those scholars and practitioners actually knew of the importance of gut health and well-being. Today we have this uh, research which tells us that 70 to 80 percent of our immunity is located in the gut. So if we take care of our gut, then uh, the implications of uh, getting ill are lesser really. So our strength and strength was like the Prophet ﷺ said that if the person is right, if the person is right, if the person is right, then the person is right. And before the scholar of Ayurveda, and before the book, बुकरात ने जो कहा तो इब्न सीना ने भी इन लोगों को मालूम था कि अगर निजाम ए हजम सही होगा तो सेहत सही होगी गिजा सही होगी और अगर निजाम ए हजम ही सही नहीं और गिजा सही नहीं तो सेहत जो है ना मुमकिन है ओके सो लेट्स ब्रीफली लुक एट सम स्पेसिफिक्स अगेन देयर इज अ कांसेप्ट ऑफ प्रोबायोटिक्स that really the immune system is affected by the micro gut bacteria uh, or microorganisms. And uh, we're gonna look at that. That's the first thing we need to take care of, the gut bacteria. And then we need to look at a few core vitamins 
and uh, mineral in this case. So what is probiotics really? Uh, probiotic, probiotics, again, is a recent invention in uh, modern complementary and alternative medicine. You could call it the opposite of antibiotics. These are friendly bacteria. Yani, insan ke dost jarasim jo hai. And it's very important that we address this first, really. There are, you know, various numbers, trillions of microorganisms of different types. Uh, and again, you'll see that how the old wisdom of using certain foods uh, really fits in with the, the current situation, those who understand. So immunity, digestion, and hormone you know, balance is affected by the gut bacteria. So probiotics, how can we get those probiotics from the natural sources? And here, there are a few examples. I'll give you a few moments to just look at this slide. And you can see that really in all traditional societies, the use of uh, bioactive yogurt, kefir, and uh, pickles and other uh, uh, fermented foods was part of the normal routine, which in many cases people have uh, left and uh, lost now. So this is the first thing that if you wanna take care of our immunity, then we really need to take care of the probiotics. Again, vitamins, there are very briefly two types of vitamins. Uh, there are those which are water soluble like B and C. This means that every day we need to consume these vitamins either in our foods or as supplements or a combination because we need them on a daily basis. And then there's a second category called fat soluble vitamins such as A, D, E, and K. And these are really, uh, they need two things. One, they need fat to be metabolized. And also we have to be careful that we don't overdose ourselves with the, those for too long. Now, the whole area of really understanding vitamins is a very confusing, very confused area. So first of all, what is, you'll see on the labels or you read that there is a thing called RDA. Uh, what this basically means is that in the 1940s, the American institutions working around agriculture and health decided that there needs to be some understanding of how, what minimum dose does an adult need. Now, let me just, share with you a story really. You know, many of you will know that in earlier times, people who were working on ships, sailors, many of them used to go on long journeys in the ships and would often get ill and die of a disease called scurvy. Uh, however, the British caught on to a prevention of scurvy so they used to give ration to the sailors of lemon and lime juice on a daily basis. And of course, that was a secret. Uh, you can see that nations are fighting over this COVID uh, vaccine. Just think how nations fought over uh, this uh, scurvy and its prevention. So this, the number of sailors who used to die in the British uh, Navy and merchant ships was much more smaller than all other European nations. And uh, they kept the secret. The British sailors were known as limeys because of the lemon and lime. And really it was realized that the sailors would get scurvy because they did not have what we now call nowadays a substance called vitamin C. Uh, so that just gives you a little bit of history, but the recommended daily allowances were set for healthy people that what is the minimum they need. Nowadays, today, nowadays we find out really that RDAs are not sufficient if we want to maintain our health. So, uh, this सफर करते थे काम करते थे या जो नेवीज थी तो उनमें से अक्सर लोग जो है एक बीमारी स्कर्वी 
اس سے مر جاتے تھے مگر جو برطانیہ کی نیوی تھی اور ان کے جو مرچنٹ نیوی میں لوگ تھے تو ان کو یہ بیماری نہیں ہوتی تھی تو ان لوگوں نے یہ راز رکھا ہوا تھا کہ اپنے کام کرنے والے لوگوں کو لیمن اور لائم باقاعدہ راشن میں دیتے تھے جس کی وجہ سے ان لوگوں کو یہ بیماری نہیں لگتی تھی تو اس طرح امریکہ میں انیس سو چالیس میں یہ آر ڈی اے کا کانسیپٹ ڈیولپ کیا گیا کہ کم سے کم ہمیں کون سا وائٹمن دن میں چاہیے اس بیسس پہ یہ معیار مقرر کیا تھا کیا گیا تھا مگر ایکچولی صحت مند انسان کے لیے آج یہ کافی نہیں چونکہ ہماری غذائیں بدل چکی ہیں ماحول جو ہے وہ زہریلا ہو چکا ہے اور اسٹریس وغیرہ بہت ہے تو خیر ہم چلتے ہیں اور آگے اس پہ ذرا بات کریں اوکے سو ریلی دیر از دس آر ڈی اے بٹ ان سم کیسز اور ان موسٹ کیسز دی آر ڈی اے از ناٹ سفیشنٹ وی نیڈ ٹو ہیو اے ہائر ڈوز آف دا نیوٹری بیکاز دیز آر سم آف دا ریزنس دیٹ ریئلی وی نیڈ مور آف دیز اسپیسیفک نیوٹری سو واٹ ہیز امرج ریئلی از واٹ دے کال سجیسٹیڈ optimum nutritional allowances which in some cases means up to 10 times more than the RDA and we're going to talk about this for you to understand when we come to vitamin C. I just wanted you to understand this concept because it will apply to many vitamins and nutrients. So this RDA is not a lot of people who So this جو مقرر معیار کیے گئے ہیں حکومتوں وغیرہ نے تو اس سے دس گنا زیادہ لینا پڑتا ہے ہم وٹامن سی کے اوپر جب بات کریں گے تو آپ کو سمجھائیں گے اوکے سو دا فرسٹ گروپ آف وٹامنس وچ ریئلی وی نیڈ ان آڈر ٹو ڈیل ود دس سچویشن از واٹ دے کول بی وائٹامنس ناؤ دا بی وائٹامنس ہیو نمبر آف وائٹامنس بٹ ہیئر وی جسٹ مینشن دیز And on the one side of the slide, you'll see RDA. So for example, if we take, let's say, as an example, vitamin B6, then you'll see that the RDA recommended here by most nutritional authorities is 2 mg, whereas the upper limit or the ideal limit is 25 mg. And you'll see this with all the nutrients. Now, why this vitamin B complex is important? First of all, they need to be used generally as a complex. Uh, they work better. And two, why do we need them in this particular time? One, because they're water soluble. So we need them on a daily basis and our foods are deficient. Two, one of the situation that has developed as a result of COVID is really that there is a great anxiety and worry and fear about this pandemic. Uh, it's understandable. So if you want to look after your uh, nervous system, and if you want to minimize the anxiety and the stress, and uh, um, then you really need to have on a daily basis a good quality vitamin B complex. So these B vitamins are very important for all of you. And at this time in the world, یعنی خوف کی حالت پیدا ہو گئی ہے تو اس میں جو ہے وٹامن بیز جو ہیں وہ بہت ضروری ہیں کہ ہم استعمال کریں اوکے ہیئر از ریئلی سم دیز آر جسٹ فیو ایگزامپل آف دا سورسز آف بی وٹامن وی کین ٹوک اباؤٹ دا سپلیمنٹ اینڈ دیر لیولس بٹ دیز آر سم آف دا سورسز دیٹ یو نیڈ ٹو انکلوڈ آن یور ان یور فوڈ آن اے ڈیلی بیسز اف یو وانٹ ٹو ہیو سفیشنٹ وٹامن بیز Again, vitamin C, this is the story I uh, shared with you about uh, scurvy and the uh, limes. Again, vitamin C is really a water-soluble vitamin, and you'll see that the RDA is a 60 mg, whereas the SON is 1,000. I just share with you my personal practice, really. Most days I take uh, 1,000, but on, uh, well, I use a thousand as a standard, but I actually use almost 
3,000 on a daily basis, especially in these difficult times, one because of the infection, but also vitamin C is also affected by the worry and stress. Again, here are some natural sources of uh, some examples of uh, where you can get those. And again, you need to have one or more of those things on a daily basis, as well as the supplementation. Ji, uh, vitamin C, jo hai, iski zarurat hai, hame har rose, is liye ki har din hame chahiye, or hamara jisam jo hai, actually ye vitamin C jo hai, ye insan ka jisam ni bana sakta, laza usse har rose chahiye. So, ye, yani is waqt jo hai na, bhoot zaruri ka hamare haa, hamare rosemara istemal mein vitamin C hona chahiye. Uh, just to share with you a little uh, story, really. there is a German uh, physician who has written a book called Why Do Animals Don't Get a Heart Attack and Humans Do? Why Do Animals Don't Get a Heart Attack and Humans Do? And his thesis, uh, he's a well-known uh, physician, is that really one reason for large number of heart attacks is that it's a form of chronic scurvy. Uh, so really, this is something for you to think about as well. Okay, so we're talking about natural sources for vitamin C. Now here is uh, vitamin D, also known as, as the sunshine vitamin. Uh, again, you'll see the RDAs in the sauna here. And really, natural sources are obviously, first of all, sunshine, when you are fortunate to have that or live in that, um, and then uh, fish, milk, dairy, and, and you'll see those. Now, let's just go to, we're going to share with you the importance of minerals. Really, most vitamins cannot work without minerals, and many people don't pay attention to this. And again, many, many people are depleted in minerals. The two richest sources of minerals are Himalayan pink, mineral salt, and Shilajit mineral resin. Uh, these, uh, especially the Himalayan mineral salt is very easily available. And you should think about uh, replacing the chemical, the everyday table salt with Himalayan mineral salt. That will help you in many ways, it's particularly it's rich in uh, and the necessary minerals. And obviously, if you're familiar with the Shilajit and you can get a good source, that will also boost. So, Madhiniyat ki bhi bhoat zarwat hai insaan ko har roz. Or khas kar is door mein Madhiniyat jo hai, wo insaan ki gaza mein bhoat kam hai. Is liye ki so-called Mardan jo fertilizer hai, wo actually zameen ko unho ne takriban har jaga kharaab kar diya hai to zameen ke andar matniyat nahi hai. To us mein ye hai ke Himalayan pink salt jo hai, us mein kaafi matniyat hai aur silajit jo hai, us mein bhi matniyat bhoot saar hai. Okay, so one of the key mineral uh, that you really need to think about is zinc. Uh, and again, you know, 30% of the world population is deficient in zinc. Again, you have the RDA and then the higher level of the supplement. So zinc can be just jo hai, wo bhi immunity ke liye bhoot zaruri hai, aur zahir hai, tib aur yunani tib mein to just ke kushte jo hai, azaron saal se istimal ho raha hai, to aap kisi motabar baayatimaad adare se just ka kushta le kar bhi istimal kar sakte hai. Again, these are some of the natural sources for zinc. Okay. Now, I want to just share with you a particularly uh, useful concept. Again, if you just look at the Chinese slide here, what they said about the lifestyle and the yin and yang and the temperance in eating and drinking. Now, there is a concept of what we call qualities. 
uh, also known as Mizaj. So basically, if we ask ourselves, which particular kind of individual is susceptible to catching and then being negatively affected by this particular virus, it is actually a particular temperament. And the temperament is uh, cold and dry individual. So it's very easy to understand these qualities. Basically, if you think about uh, summer, autumn and winter and uh, spring, you'll see that the individual which is more likely to suffer with this condition is the person whose body type is like the autumn or the fall, as the Americans say. This individual is usually cold and dry. So it's important to understand that the cold, dry type of person is more likely to be uh, affected by this virus, uh, given everything else being equal. We're going to share with you, inshallah, a way of uh, minimizing that through understanding the foods. So here it is. Look at this. Uh, can you just move that there? So if you look on the left side uh, of your screen, you'll see that there are basically four what we call cosmic elements, fire, air, water, and earth, and then the qualities which are associated with each and the season. We got that one wrong. Corresponding season is autumn. There is a mistake in this slide, yeah? So <laughs> really, the predisposition of the person is associated with earth, if you see cold and dry, and that's associated with the season autumn, not winter. And really, the temperament associated with that is what is called melancholic. Okay, let's move forward. Again, we want to give you one example from each. So what would be the foods or the substances from that particular animal. In this case, we gave you an example of beef, for example. Anything from cow uh, in general will not be suitable for the person because really this particular uh, tendency of beef is to create more cold and dryness in the person. So this will be to avoid what would be the best foods to use as an example would be really raisins in order to increase the warmth and the moisture or ginger. Let's move on a bit because once you see a whole list, you'll uh, get the idea much more. So really we are suggesting that you should look at foods which are hot and moist or warm and moist or foods which are hot and dry. These are the foods which will minimize the predispositions towards this viral infection. And these are the two types of foods that you should really try not to have. Foods which are cold and dry and foods which are cold and moist. So let's see if we can give you this. So really these are some of the suggested foods which will increase the warmth and the, uh, and the heat in the person, the warmth, uh, heat, and a dew moisture. And these next slides are the ones which are really to be avoided. The red is to be avoided and the green to be uh, preferred. Again, we just thought we, uh, bring everything together again from last week. So really, if you were to take away, again, raw organic honey, Himalayan mineral salt for uh, the replenishing the minerals, good quality spices, most spices are suitable because they give you warmth. Uh, and really, many of them are antiviral by nature. Again, we touched on the olive leaf, but this time the olive oil. And really, in terms of the anxiety, stress, the saffron, and it's used. 
in order to boost the immune system. Urdu uh, ho gaya ji. Uh, of course, we'll be sharing these slides as soon as the webinar is finished, like last week. We hope that you'll find them in your uh, inbox. Again, thank you very much uh, for listening and for being here. We have about 15 minutes. So kindly, if you want to uh, share your questions or any feedback or any contribution, we're here to listen to that and see if we can respond to that. Again, thank you very much. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Thank you, Akeem Saab. Okay, everyone. Um, and so what we'll be doing now is we'll be opening up the chat in Zoom uh, for questions. Um, and so get your questions ready, obviously, if anything came up. Um, we're just going to be opening the chat right now and you're going to be able to post your questions. As with last week, you know, we have hundreds of people, so we will try to um, we'll try to answer as many questions as possible, given the time constraints. But of course, please do forgive us um, if we don't get around to everyone, which, you know, we, we won't be able to. Um, so go ahead, please ask your questions. Have a couple of minutes and then we'll start getting those questions answered. Chat is now open. Okay, I came so. So a few questions coming in. Um, Farouk is asking, uh, what brands or companies do you recommend for buying supplements, vitamins, and minerals? Um, so that's two questions, actually. The first question is which brands or companies for the supplements? And the second question is, um, isn't the phlegmatic more disposed to sickness and virus than the melancholic? Okay. Am I ready to answer? Yes, please, Hakim sir. So the first answer to the first question is, what we hope to do either this week or next week, we'll be sharing, uh, sorry, we'll be sharing a resource uh, list with you uh, for companies from which you can buy your herbs or your supplements. Uh, so that will be coming to you. Obviously it's a list of companies that we use and we're suggesting those, but you know, it's your discretion to ensure that you buy uh, the, from the right companies, but yes, we'll be sharing that. Now, in terms of the, which temperament is more likely to be predisposed to this uh, condition, really my own um, research and uh, some of the colleagues uh, that I link up with, it's uh, my considered position and theirs that the most likely individual is melancholic followed then by the phlegmatic. Now, in the earlier stages, there was some confusion, but I think the confusion is over now. What happens really, that if we ask ourselves, are children uh, more susceptible to this particular virus? The answer globally seems to be no. So what is the temperament of the children? The temperament of the children is usually phlegmatic. Now where the confusion happens is really when an individual is affected by this virus, the symptomatology appears as a phlegmatic. But this is a response by the immune system to create more phlegm to deal with the infection and the problem rather than uh, phlegmatic being more predisposed to this virus. So no, I still take the position that really it is the melancholic. I hope that helps and clarifies inshallah. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you, Hakeem Sal. A uh, couple of questions in about um, 
things to drink. So Aisha is asking that, uh, is kombucha halal? I think it was in one of the slides on probiotics. And the other one is, uh, is drinking coffee safe from Ummah Hassanat? As far as the halal and haram is concerned, I don't know really whether kombucha is. Uh, my assumption is uh, it's halal, but if anyone knows that it's not, then you know, I'm here to listen and to correct myself. Uh, regards the use of coffee, um, you know, if it's in moderation, uh, then coffee by its mizaj is uh, hot and dry. So, you know, as long as the heat is appropriate and not too much dryness, I think that could work as a, as a preventative in, in the right circumstances. Thank you. Um, there's a question about accessing the slides. So that will be sent to everyone who's registered on the program, uh, on, on the webinar series rather. So that will be emailed out. Um, if you don't know, just go to our Facebook page and the link is there to uh, do that. Um, and what we'll do is I'll share the slide at, before the end of this call as well with that link if you want to. Um, so a few more questions, Hakeem Saab, we're getting actually a lot of questions, so we'll try and get through these quick as we can. So uh, I'll just read out a few questions and Hakeem Saab, you can perhaps uh, decide, you know, what, what you'd like to address first. Uh, so Abdul is asking, is COVID a cold and wet disease? Um, suggesting like how to take the saffron strands, how to make the olive leaf tea, so preparing, you know, the, the medicines. Um, I guess that was last week's topic. So uh, Umar Arwa is asking, is magnesium necessary to absorb vitamin D? Okay, so these few questions. Uh, is COVID a cold and wet disease um, about the herbs and how to prepare them? And then uh, vitamin D absorption, do we need magnesium as a, a mineral? Okay, so the virus, it seems, is... Uh, likes the cold weather. So yes, from that point of view, we could say that really that it is uh, cold and wet uh, because it likes that uh, kind of environment. It grows more in that. That's why we're suggesting really it's opposite, which is uh, hot and uh, hot foods. Uh, uh, what the other part of the question was, uh, one other question was about the absorption absorption of vitamin D, does it need magnesium? Not really. I mean, as you know, human body is an integrated whole, so it needs many, many things for other things to work, but vitamin D uh, doesn't necessarily need magnesium to be absorbed. Uh, Hussain, what was the third element of the question? The third oh, element is how yeah. to make the remedies Really, I think you can be guided towards the College of Medicine and Healing Arts website where you'll find that there will be resources uh, on how to make uh, remedies. Uh, uh, last week's information on remedies is there. And if you need anything, uh, you know, the way we've structured these webinars, really it's very easy uh, to know how to use the remedies. The remedies which we discussed last week, uh, you don't need too much information, but if you still need any further information, then you know, just share it in the chat box and we will see if we can put up some resources specifically regards these uh, remedies and supplements and how you can make them and use them. Um, okay, thank you, Akeem Sal. Um, would a hot and dry temperament benefit from the dry ginger tea? Hot and dry temperament will probably not benefit from dry ginger. They would need to use the moist ginger because hot and dry temperament will become more accentuated. It will become too much uh, for them. So it's better that they use fresh ginger. Thank you, Akim. So someone's asking, um, so this is Hafiza Mia is asking, there's different kind of zinc supplements, which one is the best? Again, you know, citrate is the best, really. 
citrus is the best. And also whenever you're using supplements, it's better that you actually look at the natural sources as well and combine the natural sources with the supplement because it has a better bioavailability. Uh, so for example, pumpkin seed butter uh, will have many, has a lot of zinc in it, but it also will help to facilitate this zinc supplement itself. Thank you. Uh, so there's a question from Tanha who's asking, having raw milk for cold and dry person. Sorry, so what's the question? Uh, the question is, I think they're asking that, is raw milk suitable for a cold and dry person? Uh, well, raw milk is a good start, but really it depends where is the raw milk from, which animal? And two, then how is the raw milk used? So that would be important. Thank you. Um, Okay, it's a few questions about herbs, like Hakim Saab mentioned, where to, you know, kind of get things from and how to take things that we've shared. We will be sending resources which will be made available to everyone who's registered and on our website. Um, the slides, like I said, you know, the slides which are relevant, again, we'll be sharing them. Um, Okay, a few questions. Uh, so, Asalaamu Alaikum, how do we know what to look for in a supplement to make sure it's of good quality? That's one. Uh, another one is from Sumeya. Uh, how can one determine one's proper mizaj? Okay, so look, the last question first, really. Uh, how to determine one's mizaj is not an easy thing because really it's, uh, it requires knowledge and expertise. So, the best thing is that you go to a qualified, experienced practitioner uh, who knows about this uh, speciality, and then you know you, they can help you with that. Of course, if you're not able to do that, then you can buy some books, which might be a start. Or really, without being, uh, without kind of advertising, the college does run a course, a uh, couple of courses on understanding yourself and your message, so maybe you can explore those. As to how do we know what supplements are of good quality, really it's like everything else. First criteria normally is that, you know, it's gonna cost you a lot if you buy good quality supplements. And again, in supplements, there are hundreds of companies globally, uh, and there are two types of supplements. Some are what they call synthetic, and there are some which are from natural sources. Again, inshallah, what we're going to try and do, maybe before next Saturday, we will try and put uh, a short resources for you, indicating some of the companies uh, in UK, maybe in Pakistan, and in US as the three areas where you can look at some of these companies and buy the products from. But again, you, you'll have to do do diligence as they say and look at those okay thank you Hakeem, sir. um so again i'll read out you know two or three questions for yourself um Umar talha is asking that do we offer a course on formulating recipe design and its effects for healing and maintaining health so about recipe design um someone's asking uh nizam i think um what about steam inhalation um, and then Sayyid Alzan Imam is asking, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum everyone, can you please tell us how much we take of these foods during COVID? Yeah, okay, so come to the last question first. Really, how much of the food you take, it will depend on your circumstances. But if you look at the supplements, then really we've already given you guidelines in the supplement that there is the RDA, which is the minimum for you to just kind of uh, be there, but you should look at the optimum of those supplements. Again, if you want an individual assessment, then you should go to someone who actually can do a uh, profile with you of what exactly you're lacking. Again, the college has uh, a register of Yunani practitioners, uh, which is uh, 
Guild of Yunani Tib, Yunani Medicine. You can go to that website. Maybe we'll share it in our resources and you can get uh, qualified and experienced practitioners list through there. So that's one source. The other source really is that, you know, you need to ask yourself that if you have any of the, what they call pre-existing conditions, then you will need to take more of the supplements. Mm. Okay. Now, one of the question was, do, does the college run courses where they teach recipes? Really, there is a course called uh, Diploma in Naturopathic and Herbal Medicine. It's a four-year course. Uh, and that does teach you how to uh, prepare remedies, foods, and so on. Uh, what was the first part of the question? Oh, um, yeah, so that question, yeah. So it's about, you know, recipe design specifically. And like you said, I think when people train on the professional diploma, they learn how to benefit the patients with both herbs and nutrition. Yes. Um, the, the other question was about uh, steam inhalation. Oh, yes, that's a, this is a, obviously all the questions are very important. We're coming up to our time, but let me answer this one. Steam inhalation actually is very beneficial and very important, both as a preventative and part of the holistic management. So, you know, any steam inhalation will help. And inshallah, in next week's presentation, we're gonna talk about how the lifestyle and one specific procedure which the Prophet taught us in terms of individual uh, purification on a daily basis, how it actually can minimize uh, the chances of this particular virus or any viruses going from the first stage, they enter in the nose and a certain part of the nose and they stay there for a while before they travel into the chest. And really, inshallah, we're gonna share with you that particular technique, how if that's done correctly, your chance, chances of the virus traveling into the lung area are minimized. So I suggest to send, we try and maybe conclude inshallah. Again, an offer to people that thank you for uh, giving us your time. I hope inshallah you will benefit and you'll share this and we really look forward to having you here. And for those of you who've been here, but please also ask other people to come join and benefit. So whatever has been said, I hope it's uh, beneficial for you. And again, I want to thank our colleagues in Pakistan, particularly Parvez Abbasi Saab for uh, being with us and helping us. I know it's late there uh, and really we're making him work uh, <laughs> in the evening. So maybe he could say a few words before we finish. Thank you very much, uh, Hakim Salim. I think it was a fantastic session and great learning. Uh, these are things that I would also say are quite natural and perhaps simple to apply as well. I hope that uh, all of the audience has benefited from uh, today's session. I look forward to next week's session as well. I would encourage people to reach out uh, for the slides and also for recording. Many people have asked for that and we'll be happy to share that um, once we get that information from Hakim and Salim and his team. I'd also like to thank the organizers, uh, both here in Pakistan, as well as in the UK as well. Um, and I wish everybody a wonderful evening, a great day, wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Well,